Good day to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It is Thursday, the 5th day of August 2021, and we have some very important things to talk about as the Atlantic Basin looks to become quite active, as the headline there suggests on today's thumbnail and background graphic. We also have the seasonal outlook update from Dr. Phil Klotzbach that just got released, and it has some very important information, and I'm going to hone in on one part of it that I want you to pay particular attention to as well. All right, so let's get on with it. And by the way, I am in Flagstaff, Arizona. That's the hotel room behind me. Been an incredible week out here. I'm going to do a separate video about that over the weekend to tell you about what I've done out here, what I've learned, and so forth and so on. But for now, it's time to talk tropics. So let's talk first and stop first in the Eastern Pacific. These two systems out here, completely inconsequential. Don't worry about them. This next feature developing off the coast of Mexico should stay well enough offshore to keep any appreciable impacts away from the coast of Mexico. So really no issues in the eastern Pacific at the time. In the Atlantic Basin, we do have this one area here, a tropical wave over the central tropical Atlantic. And it's got a broad area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms, marginally conducive conditions overall for development. But it's expected to move into the vicinity of our friends here in the Northeast Caribbean. And even if it doesn't develop further, it's still going to bring some sensible impacts. You know what that means? Impacts that you can sense, feel, right? Uh, touch, taste, hear, see, whatever. Seriously, it, you know, just these tropical waves alone can bring heavy rain, gusty winds, and those gusty winds can knock over your sailboat if you're down there. They can knock over your beach umbrella. They can cause problems. There's lightning strikes associated with some of the thunderstorms. So this tropical wave energy will be moving through the Northeast Caribbean, at least part of it. And we can kind of focus in on that in subsequent updates as this moves farther along in the Atlantic. To its east, and you see there in the orange, we have Invest Area 92L. This one looks like it could go on to develop. There is a very complicated, well, it's not that complicated, but it's complicated for the models to figure out. A huge piece of energy sitting out here that we call the monsoon trough, and it's enormous. You usually don't see something like that in the Atlantic. Normally it's reserved for the Western Pacific, where you just have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of miles of convergence going on, and uh, anomalous wind flow coming in from the west-southwest, uh, creating sort of uh, this extra spin out there in vorticity. So it's a complicated setup for the models to figure out because there's a lot of energy there, that's trying to, the models are trying to figure out how it's going to combine, if it's going to combine, and then where it's going to go. So for the time being, Invest Area 92L here, 60% uh, chance of development over the next five days. And this is a pretty potent tropical waves, uh, tropical wave singular. The global models picking up on it, it just depends on which run you look at. That's why you have to look at the ensembles, where you have lots of different runs of the same model with different variables, which gives you different outputs or what we call the different what-if scenarios. And the general idea is that something should develop and move through this region over the next week or so. And that fits very well with the pattern that is shaping up that we're going to talk about coming up here throughout the rest of today's update. First of all, the tour of the different satellite areas. Here are our twin weak and inconsequential systems in the eastern Pacific. This is the gathering energy for the next potential development and really nothing to threaten Mexico uh, significantly. There is some heavy rain down here associated with it. And of course, heavy rain can be an impact that can cause problems. So we never want to discount that. But it is certainly a lot better news than a bona fide powerful hurricane heading their way. Shifting over to the east a little bit in the Atlantic Basin, here is that amazing large area of what we call convergence and this monsoon trough set up uh, where you get this anomalous westerly flow because normally the trade winds come across this way and you know relatively unimpeded uh, but sometimes you get the reversal of the trades especially down in the lower latitudes with this monsoon trough that sets up and it's just a focusing mechanism like a grapevine I say that oftentimes with the Pacific but here it is in the Atlantic and so it's a focal point where these tropical waves can come off 
and the air is moist and very rich with humidity, latent heat available, um, the shear is generally low, water temperatures are warm and getting warmer, and so it's just a matter of time that something will develop and take advantage of that, and I'll show you that more in just a few minutes uh, in some of the rest of today's update. Stalled frontal boundary, pushed off the southeast coast into the northern Gulf uh, Coast states. Sometimes they can, these can be the focusing mechanisms for tropical development, but I do not see anything to worry about in the guidance associated with this right now. All right, so here is an important tweet that Phil Klotzbach put out just a few minutes ago. And a lot is going to get made, I bet, about this right here. One word, lowers, that Phil and his team have lowered, and Dr. Klotzbach, I should say, lowered the number slightly. And so people are going to focus on that. And they're going to say, oh, it's not as bad a hurricane season as we were thinking. And that's categorically true. But I want to point out something that I feel like is a lot more important. And that is the numbers of hurricanes and major hurricanes that are expected to develop. We've already had one um, hurricane that has developed, and so we're looking at seven more, and then four major hurricanes. This is huge right here. Four major hurricanes. Major hurricanes, category three or higher, make up about 80% of the damage that we see from tropical systems, period. And so we haven't had any major hurricanes yet, and the one hurricane that we had, Elsa, was a hurricane briefly uh, a couple of different times there, if memory serves. And um, so we have a long way to go. We really do. And so seven more hurricanes to go and four major hurricanes, that's problematic. Uh, and on top of that, overall 13 more named storms, and more than half of them would become hurricanes. So you need to understand this from the perspective that there's a lot of energy still to be expended from the Atlantic from here forward. And we've already gone through June and July. We had Elsa, and it was impactful. Nothing since. So you have all this energy out in the oceans, and that energy has to get expended. And we're kind of running out of time in terms of when that's going to happen, so to speak. The next 90 days, roughly, from here through the end of October basically, so a little less than 90 days, we're going to cram in a lot of activity. And that's what you have to really take away from this. All the rest of this, 13 more storms, seven hurricanes, and all four major hurricanes still yet to come in less than 90 days, probably. Yes, I know hurricane season goes through November, and some of this could last into November, certainly. But the peak time is generally late August through September and October, and I think that we're going to have a backloaded season where it goes well into October once again. This is another very important tweet. And uh, this is from Ben Knoll, that the peak of the hurricane season is weeks away and a favorable atmospheric forcing pattern will be coming with it. So here's the map right here. I'm going to uh, kind of highlight what's what. So this is the current time period, August 6th through the 13th or so. Let's use red it'll just show up better so the 6th to the 13th and this is Africa right here and you get this rising motion that is starting to set up the green is favorable all right so we're starting to see that right now let's move this out to the next time frame this is August 13th through the 21st it gets even stronger see the gradient in here all through here as we get towards the uh, next couple of weeks or so and August 20th is typically the start of the climatological rapid increase. So we're going to see activity uh, a little bit before that normal climatological increase occurs. Move it ahead another uh, several days, the 20th through the 27th. The overall activity in Africa, and it expands all across the Atlantic, very favorable, kind of setting up shop in the Atlantic Basin, and then it goes right on through, strengthening again from the end of the month into early September now. Labor Day period, strong rising motion over Africa. The Atlantic Basin fully loaded and ready to go, coinciding with the warm sea surface temperatures that we've seen, the lack of activity, lots of water that's undisturbed, 
We're going to cram a lot. All of this that Dr. Klotzbach is showing, I'm telling you folks, the next 90 days is going to be uh, harrowing for some people. It really will. Our friends in the Caribbean, you know, Central America perhaps, the Bahamas, Florida, the Greater Antilles, you know, part of the Caribbean, the Gulf Coast, the East Coast, we all need to be ready. So a very interesting tweet here from Mr. Ben Knoll. Now, before I go to the next one, I want to show you something because people may say, well, ah, is this believable? How good are those long-range models? This is weeks out. They can't even forecast the weather today or whatever. You know, I get all that. So let me show you something, all right? This is real-world verification of how well these models do these days with these large puzzle pieces. This is a tweet from the same person, Ben Knoll, back on April 15th of this year. What did Ben say? Well, it was the super blend of the UK MET and ECMWF rainfall June through August. Look what it showed. Dry through the plains in the Midwest, which it generally was. Drier trend for the Northeast, which it generally was. East Coast tropical mischief. We got that with Elsa. Drier across the Gulf. Eh, I guess it dried out eventually. It was kind of wet across the Gulf. But this is a big one. Southwest monsoon signal. And you can see it in the graphic right here. Again, this was from April. Look at the southwest monsoon signal. This was above normal precip. Uh, the pattern favored Elsa down here. We got that. And it generally was dry and hot over the nation's midsection. Uh, very hot up here and dry. But this monsoon signal stuck out and it verified. Tucson, Arizona. You know, I think uh, more than six inches of rain if I, was, if I read it correctly. Basically, the strongest monsoon, some are saying, in 20 years. And this model blend of the UK MET and ECMWF saw that, and it verified from April. You understand? That is remarkable. And so it makes me believe that these general upward motion patterns, these large-scale features, are much easier to see now in the general sense. You can say, okay... You know, the monsoon is a large area. It's not one hurricane or one thunderstorm that the models are seeing. It's the larger pattern. And so that's a lot easier for these models to resolve. So it helps me to believe this tweet here that over just the next 90 days or so, 30 days, this is going to be believable as well. So I just wanted to show you some verification there that this isn't voodoo and BS. It's real. And the science is evolving and it gives us a leg up to be ready. It really does. you got to look at it from the positive that we get an advanced notice of what could be coming. Upper ocean heat content, formidable, all over the Atlantic, subtropical Atlantic, you name it, through the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico. Yes, the water temperatures are where they need to be, including the upper ocean heat content. That is the energy stored in the upper part of the ocean, not just at the surface. Plenty of that available. Looking at the anomalies, this is really interesting as well. Going back one month, July 4th, look, right here especially. This is the key to me. Look what happened in just a month's time. We've really cooled it off in the equatorial Pacific, and that is going to help to backload the season because I think this is going to advance even further, and we're going to cool it off even more. And at the same time, the Atlantic has generally warmed up overall, not significantly because it was kind of warm anyway, but it's kind of filled in even more. So there's more rising motion, more warmer water than average, and especially down here in the main development region uh, through the Caribbean and the Gulf. It's all there, okay? The science shows us the way. It's believable, and you should take action. You still have time, right? You do to do something, you know, plan on what you're going to do. Maybe get that extra gas can from a big box retailer, five-gallon gas can. You don't have to fill it up yet, but just have it. The little things, whatever your budget can allow, do it. Talk to your family. Talk to people that might have special needs. If you've got pets, birds, lizards, exotic animals, hopefully they're allowed or whatever, you get it? you got to plan for all of that. And right now we're just talking about becoming more active. It's not here yet. But it is knocking on the door, almost literally. And i got to finish up before housekeeping knocks on my door at the hotel here in Flagstaff. But seriously, it's coming. We've seen it coming. 
The science is really helping us to, you know, prepare for this, at least mentally. And the rest will be up to you to take some action and be ready. And then I'll do my part and keep you updated on what's happening. And when stuff forms, we'll, we will be on top of it as a team. All right. So that is it from me for now out here in the Southwest. Uh, I fly home tomorrow night very late. So over the weekend, I'll produce an update uh, later in the day on Saturday. And then be back in it basically full time from here until the end of the hurricane season. No more traveling until it's time to go out for the field mi missions uh, for what's coming, because I think we're going to have a few. As always, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, giving me a part of your day from whatever device you happen to be tuning in from. I appreciate it. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again on Saturday.